There's a culture of silence that is part of Hanford's history. So well kept in plain sight secret. I got a whiff of something real strong. It takes your breath away right away. So I get up in the morning and I'm stuck in this house most of the time and don't know what to do. I was 22. I took the test and I got hired on out there. You know, I thought it was the greatest thing ever. The place that people in the area worked that did well, I got a job at. I was really proud that I was a part of it. At Hanford, Washington, another impossible project proved possible. The Hanford nuclear site was established in World War II to make plutonium. Then Hanford was used to make even more plutonium for Cold War uses. This is an extraordinary place to visit. The men and women who work here changed the entire history of the world. It made enough plutonium for tens of thousands of nuclear weapons, the arsenal of the United States. High-level nuclear waste is left over from the process of making plutonium. And that's what we're storing right now at the Hanford site. Cleaning up the largest collection of radioactive waste in the country has turned bomb town into a boom town. Cleanup officially started in 1989. We've got 56 million gallons of this waste and about 170 underground nuclear waste tanks. We're monitoring the tanks at all times. It's radioactive. There's thousands of chemicals associated with this waste. So the workers are on the front line. They're a population that's most at risk during this cleanup. They basically diagnosed it as chronic solvent encephalopathy, toxic poisoning in his brain. He had lucid moments where he knew he was losing his mind. And those were really hard to take. Come on. I'm right here. No. No. You ain't coming around. No. Uh-uh. No? No. No person should have to go through that. The fact that it's still going on today, after Gary's died from it, is unacceptable. It was kind of first documented, as far as we could tell, back in the late 1980s. The workers were breathing in toxic vapors and chemicals emitted from these tanks into the environment. Then, in 1992, a series of reports were issued by both the Department of Energy and independent federal agencies. Their own expert panel pointed out that the Department of Energy needs better protections for these workers. And this is pointed out to them in their own expert reports over and over again. there is a higher rate of cancer and illness among these workers. Sometimes they lose a good part of their lung capacity, or it could be mental, neurological brain damage. Two years later, more exposures and more studies.
even though hundreds of people have suffered exposures, it continues. So please welcome a determined fighter for workers, our Attorney General, Bob Ferguson. I feel the federal government has had more than enough time to get this right. They have failed, and I won't stand for it. There is no case we have in my office right now where the stakes are higher. I think about this case every single day. My office filed a lawsuit to get the courts to step in and require the federal government to act. They don't have a warning system in place that is nearly sufficient uh, to alert workers at the site when vapors are being released. There is protective gear that workers can wear. They need to have a consistent approach from that standpoint as well. Look, I, I get that there are workers who may be reluctant to speak about what's going on. Okay, I, I get that. Please consider talking to us. Uh, it just breaks my heart, absolutely breaks my heart to hear the stories that they tell and hear them say that DOE does not believe them. And as far as I'm concerned, that is bull shit. <coughs> I'm hacking because I can't breathe. This is what happens. Every morning, every afternoon, every evening, this is what I depend on to live. And it's not just me. There's a lot of us that depend on this to live. And, and I look healthy. I look like I'm OK. And so do a lot of other sick workers. But this is what you don't see when we're doing this at home. So I thought it was important to show everybody this is our life. In my view, there is a culture of indifference to worker safety there. What other conclusion can there be? I help support Hanford, and I really have been around the Hanford Ranch for a very long time. Overall, the safety record, the industrial safety record of all these Hanford contractors is very good. The tanks, each one has different mixtures within it. You get a wide variety of smells, but monitors that they have out there say it's all within standards for inhalation. So we fight with the U.S. Department of Energy to come forward and say, yes, these chemicals are out there, and yes, we'll accept that this disease was caused by these exposures. I'll get files, and I'll research the file and look for things that are there that can help them. You feel like you're constantly having to justify yourself. The truth. I know. I want the truth. They say it's all in your head. They will not admit that it happened. I do think that, that some of them are very much for real. It's a, it's a real issue, it's a real problem, but it's a little bit like if one person smells something, then you start smelling more carefully as well, and, and the chances are you're going to smell something too. It could be that they're smelling something else. It's happened to me. I know what it was. People don't believe. I'm going to walk to the other side. And that's where we're going to be at. That's where I told people to meet me. So we'll see how many people show up. I don't want this to happen to anybody else, you know. I'm going to wear my mask since uh, that's my life anyway. You know, I don't want anybody to end up like this, you know. But we don't talk about that stuff. I think it's time. <laughs>